Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, May 5th, 2016. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight. However, some people have more equal rights than others, uh, and actually we are making sure that marginalized groups get their views heard. Social justice warriors take a break from quoting Animal Farm to address the new oppression of the day. Park Ranger uniforms. And... I'm not gonna pay for that wall. He should pay for it. He's got the money. If you get... Are you afraid that he's gonna be the next president of the United States? What would that no, mean? All. What would no, that mean all. for Mexico? No, not all. Democracy cannot take us to crazy people. How are you going to make them pay for the wall? I will, and the wall just got 10 feet taller, believe me. It's got 10 feet taller. And like it or not, Trump says the wall is coming, and it's going to be huge. That's next. Donald Trump says a nation without borders is not a nation, and we need to build a wall across the southern border. Liberals, social justice warriors, and much of the mainstream media, they believe that Trump's wall to stop illegal immigration is racist. But wait a minute, what about Hillary Clinton? How come nobody's calling her a racist? After all, it was Hillary who voted for a 700-mile anti-immigration wall known as the Secure Fence Act of 2006. But you want but, a wall then? No, we, we've already... You, you said that. Well, I voted for border security, and some of it was a fence. I don't think we ever called it a wall. Maybe in some places it was a wall. But it was aimed at controlling our borders. And don't forget, it was only a couple of years ago when Hillary sounded Trumpian on this issue. We've got to do several things, and I am, you know, adamantly against illegal immigrants. You see, that was then, but this is now. And today, in 2016, the idea of securing our borders has somehow become politically incorrect. And that's why Hillary and Bernie Sanders, too, by the way, they both voted for a 700-mile wall in 2006. But today, somehow, the idea of Trump's wall is racist, and it's hurting people's feelings. When Mexico sends its people they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. And that's the clip that started it all right there, my friends. So many people got butt hurt and offended by that statement. And that's why all the... Latino protesters in Costa Mesa started rioting because they somehow turned that into Trump hates Mexicans. And he says that they are all criminals and murderers and rapists. And they always say that Trump is bad for America. He's a bad man. Meanwhile, they're out there waving every flag you can think of, but the American flag. Ever notice that? This one guy, he was, he's, so stupid, he told our reporters that it's incorrect that Mexicans are bringing bad people into the country. And then to prove it, he ran off and started vandalizing the place, picking fights and joining the riot. Now, I don't know if that guy is an immigrant, but I do know that he's ignorant because Trump never said Mexicans are rapists and criminals. And these people are too stupid to even know that they are protesting, excuse me, rioting. Now, I wanna show you some statistics right now. This is from an article that's on Breitbart. Illegal alien crime accounts for over 30% of murders in many states. Between 2008 and 2014, 40% of all murder convictions in Florida were criminal aliens. That's illegal immigrants. In New York, it was 34%. In my home state of Arizona, 17.8%. During those years, criminal aliens accounted for 38% of all murder convictions in the five states of California, Texas, Arizona, Florida, and New York, while illegal aliens constitute only 5.6% of the total population 
in those states. And that's according to U.S. Census estimates, which probably means more like 11 to 15 percent. So I think you're starting to get the picture. A large number of illegal immigrants are criminals. And that means rapists. And yes, that means murderers. And we are getting tired of it. And if, if you look at the map demographically, most of Trump's Latino supporters are living right there on the border states. They live in counties where they see lots of crime and lots of harm being done to their families and their communities by these criminal thugs who are crossing the border illegally and committing all these crimes. So enough with the race baiting. We are all getting tired of it. All of us multicultured Americans, and let me tell you something, folks, we are unified on this issue, and that's why Donald Trump is going to be our next president. So we have this open border. It's a, it's a sieve. It's like water pouring through. People are coming in by the hundreds of thousands. We have no idea who's coming in. And it's not just from the border. Talk to the border security. You will see the kind of people coming. You'll see the kind of crime that's being committed. And we're taking these people. And by the way, just to fi finish on that, it's common sense. They don't want these people, so they send them to the United States. This is, in my opinion, the most critical issue of the 2016 presidential race, because it will define whether or not there will even be an America anymore. Because I tell you what, if this keeps up, you won't even be able to recognize our country in the near future. This election will define America in the 21st century. You all look great. The end of the Republic has never looked better. It's time to shake the rust off America's foreign policy. No country has ever prospered that failed to put its own interests first. Shut up! Both our friends and our enemies put their countries above ours. And we, while being fair to them, must start doing the same. You said that us Mexicans are bringing all types of bad people to this, to this country? That's incorrect, dude. They're bringing drugs. We just caught these guys coming across the border. One, two, three. Four, they have big satchels. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. <laughs> and some, I assume, are good people. <laughs> we will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. The nation state remains the true foundation for happiness and harmony. You think we have kids because we like sex? No, we're having kids ready to start this war, believe me. I got another one on the way, so be strapped up, ready for you. Come get it. Come get it. Come knock on my door and see what happens. We're ready. We're ready. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. I voted for border security, and some of it was a fence. I don't think we ever called it a wall. Maybe in some places it was a wall. He is not only a racist. He's not only a misogynist. Yeah. He is a fascist. Yeah. Donald Trump is a Nazi. He is hurting our unity at home. Why don't you turn your camera? Show them how many people come to these rallies. Turn them. Go ahead, turn them. Go ahead. And just when you thought political correctness couldn't get any more ridiculous and absurd, ladies and gentlemen, I give you... 
the Hispanic Access Foundation. This is a coalition of Latino activists and civil rights groups who have been triggered by, wait for it, park ranger uniforms. Not making this up, this is, this is real. Because they say our nation's park ranger uniforms threaten Latinos because they look too much like <laughs> Border Patrol. The Hispanic Access Foundation is asking Presidente Obama for an executive order to address the issue. Barack Obama, tear down those uniforms. They also want the park rangers to get different trucks, vans, and SUVs because they look too much like the Border Patrol vehicles, and that could trigger some people into feeling very uncomfortable. Now, I don't know if these activists have any suggestions of what they would like the new uniforms to look like, but I have a few suggestions. How about this one? Now, this looks non-threatening to me. I mean, you got to admit that just it's a little squirrel on there, and that takes you to a safe place, doesn't it? I would not feel threatened by a guy wearing that outfit. Or here's one. This is real cute. A, I think it's also very fashionable, and I think liberals would agree that if you're going to wuss out, do it with style. And this next one, you might think I'm being a little silly, but hey, if you're going to do this, you might as well go all the way, right? Guaranteed not to offend. Instead of park rangers, why not power rangers? Now, look, I'm not trying to turn this into the Daily Show. I'm just saying, give me a f***ing break. Voting fraud activist Gary Welsh was found dead leading up to the Indiana primary. Police found Welsh's body in an apartment complex stairwell in Indianapolis, Indiana on May 1st, with, as a witness reported, a gun lying beside him and quickly ruled it a suicide. Investigative journalist Wayne Madsen reported, Welsh was a well-known lawyer and a political commentator in Indiana who combated against the takeover of the state by religious fundamentalists and opposed well-connected GOP presidential candidates like Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz, and Marco Rubio. Welsh was a well-known advocate for election integrity and he supported Donald Trump for the GOP nomination. He published the blog Advance Indiana, which heavily reported on voting fraud in the state. A strange message was posted to Welsh's blog prior to his death, stating, if I'm not around to see the vote results, my prediction is that Trump wins Indiana with just shy of 50% of the vote. Welsh was also one of the insiders who told Madsen about the foam parties Rubio reportedly attended during the early to mid 1990s at gay entertainment venues in South Florida. He, he was the source of the photographs of the of the guy who looked an awful lot like Rubio at the, uh, the foam parties in South Beach, Miami. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that made its way into the debate when Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, uh, kept referring to Marco Rubio as the boy in the bubble. Uh, <laughs> I think it was quite clear what he was referring to. But Gary Welsh, who ran Advanced Indiana out of Indianapolis, an attorney, uh, a Republican uh, party, but not certainly not a Cruz guy or a Rubio guy. I believe he supported Trump. Uh, they're saying he, he shot and killed himself over the weekend. They found a, a gun next to his body. The police said, oh, well, we're basing our suicide, with, even without the autopsy, and we know, we know how cops are with autopsies, uh, or the lack thereof uh, yeah. recently with Scalia. The cops said, well, he posted something. He said, I may not be around on Tuesday to see Trump win, but, uh, and they say, well, that means he obviously intended to kill himself. Well, that that's like Martin Luther King said in his last speech, I may not get there with you. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get to the promised land, but he, you know, he obviously knew that his life was being threatened with all these cases like the D.C. Madam, Danny Casalero, mm -hmm. uh, Gary Webb, who I have been in contact with prior to his supposedly shooting himself twice in the head. The police find and reporters find friends that say, oh, he was despondent. He had financial problems. The New York Daily News said, well, he was gay. What, 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 what in the world does that have to do with it? <laughs> yeah, Anything. exactly. Along with the revelations about Rubio's past, Welsh was also pushing the narrative surrounding the evidence that Ted Cruz's father 
Raphael was somehow involved in the JFK assassination, as this photo shows what appears to be Ted Cruz's father standing to Lee Harvey Oswald's left. As one of Welsh's clients, Greg Wright, wrote, Welsh was unafraid of unmasking corruption. Many of his friends had suggested that he be careful. He represented me in a matter I had put before the commission. I had asked the election board if then-Senator Richard Luger and his wife, Charlene, had voted illegally in Marion County because they have not lived at the home address on their registration for more than three decades. Gary won that case. The reasoning behind Welsh's untimely demise has been attributed to depression, due to dealing with financial difficulties. But how can we ever know that for sure? Gary Welsh loved America. Uncovering corruption is one of the most positively invigorating pursuits anyone can experience. The elephant in the room here is, why would Welsh kill himself right before the results were to be announced for an election he was working tirelessly to influence? John Bound for Infowars.com. Thank you for joining us in this Cinco de Mayo celebration. We'd like to ask all white people, please remove your American flag t-shirts at this point so we can start the celebration. What does Cinco de Mayo mean? Cinco de Mayo is uh, when the Mexican army fought against the, uh, France, the French army. Yep. So what happened in 1960, no, 1866, the French army invaded Mexico because they wanted them to, they wanted Mexico to pay for, for some debt. So they invaded and President, President Benito Juarez uh, fought against the, the French. So it was just like some battles. The main battle was in Puebla. But I, here in the U.S., people celebrated as the Mexico's independence. What well, you hear about what's going on in California, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals just ruled that on Cinco de Mayo, that white high school students are not allowed to display the red, white, and blue or display American flag t-shirts during Cinco de Mayo for fear it may cause racial tension. What do you think about that? I mean, if they take it as a racial thing, that's, I mean, that's, I wouldn't take it as that. I mean, they have the right to wear the flag every day. Do you agree with that or what are, what are your thoughts on that? It's a very difficult subject. Um, I think it's a shame to tell people they can't wear their t-shirt with their flag on it. I don't think that that's right. I mean, you should get to wear what you want to wear, even if it offends people. I personally wouldn't wear red, white, and blue. I feel like that's an unnecessary statement um, that does seem to be bred in controversy and trying to create scandal. That's all you want! That's all you want! Okay, against like the whole our freedom laws I mean we're allowed to do whatever we want right but I do think it's like bad on their part to antagonize other people's culture gosh I just wish people would have empathy and understand that we are a nation of immigrants you're doing it wrong I think we do live in America and if you want to show your American pride you should be able to do that every day of the year However, it shouldn't be used to target against other students. Americans across the country are using the time to rally in support of comprehensive immigration reform. Why can't we have a vote on this? 11 million people hoping to have a legal status and hope and a path to citizenship. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi says we should celebrate it by immigration reform. What do you think of that? Absolutely. The sooner the better. I think immigration reform is absolutely essential. We need it desperately. Happy single to mile, my friend. You'll say my assessment, you'll get to be Viva la raza! Que viva! Trano! 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 Go back to Boston! Go back to the Plymouth Rock! You pilgrims! Get out! <laughs> we are the future! We need the voters! This is Aslan, this is Mexico. They're the pilgrims on, on our land. We claim this land is ours, it's always been ours, and we're still here. And uh, none of this talk about deporting. If anybody's going to be deported, it's going to be you. The United States is who is the immigrants here, not us. Why is it that these people 
these frail, racist white people want to keep us out of this country. It's not because simply the color of our skin. It's not simply because they just want to exploit us. Let me tell you why. Because on this planet right now, a six billion people at the forefront of the revolutionary movement is the Raza. When you go to Venezuela. You can't stop us. There's too many of us. We're ready. We're, we're breeding by the day. Back to Europe. This is America. Look your colors. You're white. You don't belong here. We have the armor. We have the infantry. We have the artillery. And we have to combine it under one organized command. So we can play an effective counter-enemy war against those racists that are trying to continue to discriminate and impede ourselves. It's about assuring that we increase our numbers. That we increase our numbers at every level. And let me tell you, we can't go back. You know, we're in a civil war. This is America, whites! You do white to be America! Go back to Europe! You idiot. This used to be Mexico, you know what I mean? And the people that were here before, they're, they're just not gonna get up and leave. Mexico! 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 Arriba Mexico! Think we have kids because we like sex no we're having kids ready to start this war believe me i got another one on the way and she'll be strapped up ready for you come get it come get it come knock on my door and see what happens we're ready we're ready i say talk me i said i'm down in downtown austin today trying to find out why people think it's racist to wear an american flag shirt and or be an american on cinco de mayo let's see what people around here have to say did you hear about the ban on American flag t-shirts during Cinco de Mayo? No. I mean, how does that make you feel? I mean, we're in America, right? We should be able to wear whatever we want. Whenever we want. Yeah, absolutely. Do I offend you wearing this right now? Not at all. And why is that? Pride. Pride in what? Country. Well, do you eat Mexican food? When I can. So when you can, you're a racist? <laughs> No, 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 that, that, there's people that are saying that if you don't eat Mexican food, you're racist. We think that's pretty ridiculous. I think they're just stupid if they don't eat it. Yeah, I mean, it's just delicious. I mean, there shouldn't be anything tied to it. I mean, sometimes you want a taco. So did you hear that in California, they banned the wearing of an American t-shirt such as this by for the students? So if you had a kid in California, he went to school today wearing an American flag t-shirt, he would be sent home. I heard that, I saw that on the internet. That's pretty ridiculous. It I mean, is, it is ridiculous. I mean, I, you know, what, what are we coming to right now in this country when we can't even what? walk around and be patriotic and I, I, have pride for our own country? I think um, it's OK for certain people to expound certain views. Um, but if I mean, we're not going to go to Mexico and start raising up American flags and then, you know, not expect for them to be a little teed off about that. Well, the only ones over there are the drug dealers. Everyone else is coming over here and I don't blame them. Yeah, I'm them over here. I love Latino Latinas. But anyway, that's all I'll say. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother well, story. Well, thank you. Go America. Guys, take care. Rock out. Reza reports are saying that if you don't eat Mexican food, you're a racist. Yeah. No. Did you hear about the ban in California for students to wear American flag t-shirts on Cinco de Mayo and that Wells Fargo has also ordered the lower of all American flags on Cinco de Mayo? Huh. It's horrible. I mean, how does that make you feel? I mean, aren't you a proud American? I am. If I wanted to be a Mexican, I'd go to Mexico. Did you hear about in California that they are banning students from coming into school on today if they have an American flag t-shirt on? I mean, we're in America. I mean, is that not pretty ridiculous? That is ridiculous. And did you hear that Wells Fargo lowered their flags nationwide today for Cinco de Mayo? I mean, we are in America. Why is this going on? I don't know. You tell me. I just... I think it's just ridiculous. I mean, that's the most un-American thing that can happen. I mean, it'd be like me marching into Mexico right now on 4th of July and saying, hey, I got my flag up. You guys take your flag down. Let's meet in the middle. You mean, do you think they're going to fly with that? No. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we're out here doing. We're trying to figure out why they think it's okay. And did you know that they're going around saying that if you don't eat Mexican food, you are racist. How ridiculous is that? That's ridiculous. Most on how many levels? It's spicy. Yeah, I mean, it's delicious. Some people don't like spicy food. I know, Personally, I mean... I love, I love spicy food. But I mean, if you don't want to eat it, it, it shouldn't make you racist, all right? No. I mean, it's just food. Yeah. Do I offend you wearing this today? This uh, flag? Yeah. Absolutely not. Wells Fargo was ordered to take down their American flag on Cinco de Mayo. Do you think that's a good thing or no? No, I don't think that's a good thing at all. This is America. We should fly the flag anytime and anywhere we wish. 
And did you also hear about the school in Oklahoma or in California that banned the wear of American flag t-shirts like this by their students? I think that they need to serve and realize just how important it is for people to express their uh, right to dress however they wish. You know, I mean, this is America, isn't it? Yes, it is. What is your input on the uh, ban in California schools for students? Where if they show up, if why, they show why up, they banned? a court okayed it. Let me see the article. Why, why were they banned? Because they said that it is controversial and it uh, brought up tension for students if they were to wear an American flag t-shirt on Cinco de Mayo. Um, I guess that would be their opinion. And on, but I, uh, I mean, opinions don't mean anything. We're in America. That's exactly where, to me, to me, as a former uh, military person, I believe right on. That, that their opinion is their American right. If they want to lower their flags or whatever they want to do, I believe that it is their right to do. That's their freedom of speech. They can't force us, but if their choice is to lower it for whatever reason they feel is necessary, that I think that there's a lot of people overseas who would respect that opinion. Whether it's ours or not, I think the United States has the right to decide what they want because of that. Well, we were wondering what people think about schools mandating that you can't wear an American flag t-shirt on Cinco de Mayo. I think they shouldn't teach children that young to feel that kind of way about anything as far as the flag or anything else. Like, that's their choice. If they want to wear it, they should be able to. Right. Well, what do you think about the court upheld that decision and said it didn't violate their First Amendment right to make the children not wear the American flag t-shirt? Does this offend you? Yes, because that is what the Constitution's about. Does it, does it offend you that this no. man is... Not at all. Why would it? We're standing right here with him. Why would it offend us? We'd walk off. Why do you think Americans are the only ones that are trying to figure out how we can stitch together all of our flags? Why is it wrong for Americans to be patriotic? I think it's a generalization, though. I'm sure some, there's, some, there's a Mexican guy just like me walking along with aviators on going, I wonder if we can stitch an American flag and a Mexican flag together. There's so many people in the world, you know, you can't really generalize. You know, around the corner, you might meet someone exactly the same as you or completely opposite. So. Well, and I agree on the our basic level, we are all the same. But are you aware of any other countries that have this thing where they're trying to just please everyone of every other culture and take taking away what their patriotism? Uh, mm, mm, I mean, name one country that's trying to include everyone. Name one country that is going to lower their flags and praise of a holiday that they don't even actually celebrate in Mexico? Uh, I, I guess I couldn't off the top of my head. I don't know. Maybe Canadians, though? I don't know. Can we count them in? But I don't know what they do it for. But honestly, it's, uh, you know, it's more for the money here. That's why. You know, they sell drinks that way. So yeah. is what it is. Hi, this is Cinco de Mayo today. You're aware? Yes. Cool. Uh, does this item offend you today? No. Good. Why is that? That never offends me. Not even on me. even on Cinco de Mayo, though. It doesn't. You know, some people uh, might think that's racist. I I understand. <laughs> what What do you think about um, like I feel like a lot of times with holidays and stuff, it seems like in America, on just like a basic level, people are coming together. It's getting less racist, you know, less device, divisive tactics. But now all of a sudden, there's this huge push to say that certain ways. If you, you can't say fiesta, for instance, like a lot of colleges aren't allowed to have fiestas because it's, yes, and they're, I guess it's like cultural appropriation of certain things. Does that offend you? I mean, we've always been a diverse country, so for to limit anybody on saying anything, whether it's fiesta or an American word or whatever it is, I mean, we have always been a melting pot. You know, we have tons of different cultures, generation after generation people have been coming, and I think that that's one of the best things about our country is that we should be able to celebrate everybody's ethnicity and different cultural beliefs, and, you know, I mean, that's the, the good thing about the United States, and so to try to limit that or take that away is just ridiculous. I'm here to ask if here on Cinco de Mayo, if this American flag offends you? This American flag does not offend me, not one bit. And why is that, sir? Because I'm an American and I'm proud of it. You know, in California, they banned kids from wearing American flags on Cinco de Mayo, right? I'm offended by that. What do you think the USA's agenda is in lowering flags and telling people that their flag shirts are offensive and the court upholds that? What do you think is the agenda there? 
In all honesty, I don't know the court case. I can't make a uh, intelligent response to that. I don't know what prompted it. But as far as agendas, I was making reference to them doing their own country thing, their cultural thing. I think as far as us being in America, I think our ability to do whatever we want. And as, as personally as opposed to it as I am, that goes, and even as far as flag burning. I would fight for somebody's ability to do that in this country as their First Amendment right. Mm -hmm. I think freedom of speech should be given to anybody and everybody in this country, whether we agree with their opinion or not, because not everybody agrees with ours. Uh, we wanted to ask you guys today if you are offended by this item on Cinco de Mayo. What is it? Uh, it's just a, <laughs> a rolled up American flag here. Uh, I am not offended by the American flag. Obama's arrogant lecturing barely works in the United States. What made him think it would work on an entirely different country? I figured you might want to hear from the President of the United States what I think the United States is going to do. Maybe some point down the line there might be a, a UK-US trade agreement, but it's not going to happen anytime soon because our focus is in negotiating with a big block, the European Union, to get a trade agreement done. The outcome of that decision is a matter of deep interest to the United States because it affects our prospects as well. After Obama made his allegiance to the dark side abundantly clear, Alex Massey of The Spectator wrote, The reaction to Barack Obama's remarks yesterday in which he suggested that Brexit campaigners were not being wholly straight with the British people has been as remarkable as it has been depressing. How dare Obama insult Britain like this? How dare he threaten the British people? Why has Britain allowed itself to be humiliated in this fashion? And who is this guy to talk anyway? He's just a jumped up half Kenyan lame duck president whose record is nothing to celebrate anyway. Yeah, boo, sucks to be you, Barack Hussein Obama. You know nothing. The United States government, I'm sure, thinks it doesn't want Britain to leave the EU. Now, why would that be? We are their voice in Europe. This is something that has to be decided on the basis of what is good for Britain, what is good for Britain economically, and what is good for Britain politically. Actually, our democracy is being eroded. We are creating a monster in Europe that's not answerable to public opinion, which will, in the end, end in disaster. Five laws out of every six that are made in the United Kingdom and inflicted upon us are made because the unelected commissars of the European Union who have the sole right to propose legislation for the whole of Europe, and that legislation takes precedence over all our own domestic legislation, they have to do what the commissars tell us to do. Commissar is the official German name for the 30 people who, behind closed doors, run Europe. They have absolute power, enormous wealth, and no responsibility. These are the people who now dictate to us mm -hmm. what our laws shall be. Ultimately, this is something that the British voters have to decide for themselves. But as part of our special relationship, part of being friends is to be honest and to let uh, you know what I think. Let me be clear. When it comes to the special relationship between our two countries, there's no greater enthusiast than me. I'm very proud to have had the opportunity to be Prime Minister and to stand outside the White House listening to this man, my friend Barack, say that the special relationship between our countries has never been stronger. But I've never felt constrained in any way in strengthening this relationship by the fact that we're in the European Union. In fact, quite the reverse. We deliver for our people through all the international groups that we're part of. We enhance our security through the membership of NATO. We further our prosperity through the G7 and the G20. And like those organizations, Britain's membership of the EU gives us a powerful tool to deliver on the prosperity and security that our people need and to stand up for the values that our countries share. Obama's New World Order bedfellow, Prime Minister David Cameron, now has his hands full. The Conservatives were re-elected in the general election held in May of 2015. Cameron held true his pledge that if the Conservatives were re-elected, the terms of Britain's EU membership would be renegotiated and a vote on the Brexit would be held. However, Cameron's renegotiation with EU Council President Donald Tusk has been criticized as being nothing less than political theatre. So you were 
disappointed, really. You were disappointed with what the Prime Minister uh, achieved. Yeah, look, I don't think that the agreement, as it stands, actually reverses or changes anything dramatically. But that's not to be uh, churlish about there were some successes. And I think it is a success to a degree to get any kind of change from the European Union. But let's not get this. It's been sold as this great moment of change. Meanwhile, the actors in England are changing as the Labour Party is projected to possibly lose more seats than it did in 1982, as reported by The Telegraph. Great Britain never totally submerged itself into the Bilderberg brainchild's poison known as the European Union. Britain opted out of the EU monetary policy. The pound is alive and trading nervously as the Brexit vote is favored by 45% of voters. Also, Britain doesn't share open borders like the rest of the EU. Of course, tell that to the 83,000 illegal immigrants claiming asylum in the UK as was reported by the Express recently. We've lost control of our borders. Net migration into Britain is now running at 10 times the post-war average. And that's if you believe the official figures, which frankly, I don't. We have to build a new house in this country every seven minutes just to cope with current levels of immigration. As the Brexit winds down to its June 23rd deadline, expect to see Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland demanding their own say in the fate of the EU's sovereign swallowing hold over the United Kingdom. John Bound for Infowars.com As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. That's veteran Denver police officer Charles Jones IV smashing an unarmed suspect in the face six times. Officers accused of using excessive force on a suspect and then trying to erase the evidence. Of I'm not observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? How can you ask such a question? What difference at this point does it make? When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in the community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. Tonight, I'm announcing those actions. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> he came, he saw, he died. <laughs> yes, in modern warfare, our military leaders are finding that words and ideas are highly effective weapons. We just have to be repetitive about this. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We are trained to deceive if we have to. You really don't have to trust me. You shouldn't trust me. In fact, by my actually participating in that, I will taint the news. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Okay, Miss Hughes, well, we're, we're going to do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I have yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hand. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions?
Hey, I want to remind our audience that there will be another Trump rally tomorrow in Eugene, Oregon. And it'll be at the Lane Events Convention Center at the fair, 7 o'clock p.m. Doors open at 4 o'clock p.m. You can get your tickets at DonaldJTrump.com. The InfoWars crew will be there. And that means Joe Biggs and myself. We will both be going to Oregon tomorrow. We look forward to meeting all of you. And let's go trigger happy. Together we can trigger some social justice warriors. Hey, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central. Till then, have a good night. We'll see you.